This is the book, The Unshakable Truth, How You Can Experience the 12 Essentials of a Relevant Faith by Josh and Sean McDowell. Uh, Josh, we've been having a great conversation here. I only think it would have been better if Sean could have been right well, here. He's going to be on the program in the interviews, but right here with me. Yeah, and if he was right here, it would I thought maybe he would be, but he's not. But I, I'm happy to just sit and... You're and, stuck with and, me. And bask, in, <laughs> bask in your wisdom. Um, so you've written all these books. You've had over 50 years of ministry. You're, you're a world-renowned uh, author. You've probably spoken in more universities than anybody in the world has ever done. Uh, a lot of guys, after all of that, would just sort of say, you know, uh, time to hang it up, play some more golf, retire. Uh, I don't get the sense from you that that's where you're heading. Uh, wh what is next for you? I always say to myself, to my children, I never ever want to rest what God has allowed me to do. Because I can't believe that I have a hundred and some books out. I mean, I never thought I'd have a pamphlet. Right. I mean, I'm from a little old, tiny town. My parents never went beyond the second grade. Uh, from second grade on, I had a severe speech impediment. Uh, if my teachers ever taught grammar, I never caught it. Most people don't catch my poor grammar because they got worser. <laughs> but uh, I never dreamed that God would allow me to do what I've had the privilege of doing and serving Him. And, but I can't say, well, you know, it's all over now, just relax. No, there's still a world out there that needs to know that for God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, whoever believeth in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. It doesn't matter how many books you've written, what you've done, anything else, the, the, the lost are still out there. Mm -hmm. And I just, until my dying breath, I just, Lord Jesus, I want to be a part of your solution. I don't want to be a part of the problem. Uh, I don't know how many more books I'm going to write. I got five more done. I got three coming out in January in one month, <laughs> three of them. Uh, well, once before I brought last year, a year ago, I brought three out in one day. But uh, I just want to keep writing if I can, as long as it helps people to know Him and to love Him and to share Him. Otherwise, it wouldn't be worth it. Uh, I don't know how long I'll continue speaking. I'm booked for almost three years, so I, I, I better stay alive for three years to do it or I'm going to have to pay back a lot of money. But you're also <laughs> involved uh, overseas. You're, 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 um, Most of my work's overseas. Yeah, and, but, but this is a side of Josh McDowell that many of us are not familiar with. So the work you're doing with, uh, with the broken, the orphans, the widows, the, uh, the disadvantaged. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, the gospel is caring. And boy, did Jesus talk a lot about caring for the poor, the widows. And in Russia, where for years we worked in the underground, I was one of the biggest publishers of books in Russia, all the way from uh, Sofia, Bulgaria to St. Petersburg. Hundreds of thousands of books we printed under communism. And a lot of people never knew. A lot of my own staff didn't know it because we could have been closed down and at risk. And I remember they came to me and they said, Josh, can you help us? Uh, we have so many poor in our church, others. So I said, well, let me pray about it. So I came back home and it was Christmas, which is a big thing in our home. It is. About the 5th of December, I said, to, I said, honey, I've got to go back to Russia right away. She said, what? And I explained to her why. And boy, this is the woman I married to. I said, honey, will you go with me? She said, yes. And this was just before Christmas. So I called up some friends. We put together 70, 70 pound boxes of food. People in Julian, California, even non-believers came together. I called companies. They shipped the stuff in all in a matter of four days. We boxed these up. I rented a U-Haul truck and Dottie and I drove to the LA airport from out in the mountains down near San Diego. It was Pan Am. And I said, Lord, 
it's a lot of money for excess baggage. Now I got it, people donated, I got it. But I said, I'd rather spend it to helping people than paying for the shipping. So I hope I was in the love of the spirit here. I said, okay, I'm gonna find the oldest man here. I found this African-American, um, uh, not bellhop, what do you call them at the airports? Uh, help you with your luggage and all. Yeah, well, and, uh, whatever. Anyway. Yeah. And the, Assistant. <laughs> yeah, he was the oldest man around. I went to him and I said, sir, do you have children? He said, oh yeah. I said, do you love your children? He said, oh, do I? I said, do you have grandchildren? I said, oh yes, he named on me. I said, do you really love your grandchildren? He said, yeah. I said, sir, if your grandchildren, your children didn't have anything to eat, they were so hungry and starved, would that bother you? He said, oh, tears came to, I said, it would break my heart. I said, see all these boxes? Whew. I said, those are for people's grandchildren who have nothing to eat in Russia. And people, friends of ours and other Christians put this all together. What will it cost me? He looked at me, he looked at the truck, looked around, he says, Give me your tickets. He left for one hour. Now, he was there five hours ahead of time. I got a little nervous. He'd just take off my... Pretty soon he came back with a whole handful of baggage tags. He went and talked to him and sent them all free. <laughs> he went in as a grandfather and appealed to the leaders of Pan Am, sent it free. Now, this is how God was at work. He's always at work. It was right during the beginning of the outbreak of the first Gulf War in Kuwait. Well, the U.S. government had, had confiscated to use all the large jets and everything for shipping over troops, everything. So we get on the plane, they announce, it's not a direct flight, we have to land in London. And we're gonna have to change to a smaller plane because the government has confiscated this plane to take over. And they said, most of your baggage won't make it, but we will get it there. I went, oh no, I have five days in Russia to deliver all this. So I thought, oh Lord. I started to doubt the Lord. Arrived. Of all the baggage on that huge plane in their life, there were 70 bags. They were our 70 boxes. No one else got one single bag. And people were mad, wouldn't even. Here's Dottie and me. We're pulling these 70 pound boxes off. No, these people were mad at us. So we get it off and uh, we go to the train station because somehow the Lord said, go to St. Petersburg. I've never been to St. Petersburg. Show up at the train station, all these. And some of the people that made the most money are the people at the airport that help you with your bags in Russia. And this one guy came up and says, what is all of this? I said, it's for people hurting. It's gifts from American Christians to the people of Russia that are hurting for food. He said, stay here. He came back. He said, come on with me. I said, no, I got to stay. And he said, no, these two men will watch everything here. They took us over, went right to the front of the line and served us a huge steak dinner. They paid for it. Then they went, put it all on the train free, would not take a gift and told the lady of the train. Now, when you get to St. Petersburg, you told them, because this guy, I guess, was quite well known, that I said they are to take this to wherever they need to go free and not accept one penny. So I get there. They're loading all this off. And we had called... Peter Konovochik. I'd never heard of his name before, but just I thought with a name like that, you must be someone. <laughs> and said, we're coming. Josh McDowell called and said, he's coming. Can somebody meet me at the train? Well, they all knew me from the books. Well, these two pastors show up and uh, they were all excited uh, to be able to meet me. And then they said, what is all of this? So I told the story, I said, God just led me. I need to bring food back for 70 families. And these grown pastors started to weep. He said, this is for us? I said, yes. They had just done a study in their church. And they came out and they said, yesterday we discovered we have 70 families who are literally starving. And last night we went to our knees, not knowing what to do. Well, I didn't know any of that. And I show up with 70 boxes for 70 
Well, let us, <laughs> after that, I was off and running all over the world meeting people's needs. Sounds like another book to me, Josh. 70, you know. 70 boxes for 70 families. I, That's the gospel. But, you know, you get the sense at a time like that, that there is an overarching sovereign God at work, you know, and we're just players, right? We, we do our little part and the Lord's doing the big thing. And we all work together and look what happens. It's been a joy having you with us. It's been so good. <laughs> the old fist pump. No, that's my flu shake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee. This is the book, The Unshakable Truth, How You Can Experience the 12 Essentials of Relevant Faith.